On this episode of China Uncensored, China becomes Iran's new BFF. Hi, welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. The Iranian regime is in trouble, and the Chinese Communist Party is coming to the rescue, like a prince rescuing a damsel in distress. Or, you know, an evil prince rescuing an evil damsel in distress. But first, a bit of background on what's happening in Iran. Back in May, the Trump administration pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal. In August, they followed that up with tough sanctions on Iran. Those covered access to U.S. dollar banknotes, the automotive sector, and exports of metals, agricultural products, and, wait, carpets? Sanctions on Persian rugs? Now I'm never going to see a whole new world. Anyway, on November 4th, the U.S. plans to impose sanctions on Iranian oil. Washington aims to bring Iranian oil exports down to zero to force Tehran to renegotiate a nuclear deal. And that spells trouble for the already struggling Iranian economy. Over the past year, Iran has seen 200% inflation. Add that to the pressure of already high unemployment. So it's no wonder that Iran has seen more than 100 public protests in less than 10 months. And the protests haven't eased up. This next news video is from just after the Trump administration announced it was withdrawing from the nuclear deal. Recent protests inside Iran have been deadly, with security forces turning their weapons on their own people and threatening to resolutely confront growing unrest over economic struggles. What's different about these protests compared to the big ones in 2009 is that they aren't targeted at any particular political faction. They're against the entire system. Here are protesters shouting, mullahs get lost. In Iran, mullahs are the religious leaders who control the government. In another city, the protesters shout, this is a bloody month, the mullahs are falling. And in this video, protesters are rejecting their government's anti-American propaganda, shouting, our enemy is here. Iran's leaders lie when they say it's America. How did the Iranian regime respond to the civil unrest and economic woes? by saying it would bring America to its knees. Yeah, that'll fix unemployment. But fear not, where there's an authoritarian regime in trouble, a dictatorship that's lost the support of the people, or a system collapsing because of corruption, the Chinese Communist Party will ride to the rescue. Many traditional buyers of Iranian oil, like South Korea, India, and the EU, have been cutting oil shipments from Iran under threat of U.S. sanctions. So the Chinese regime has been stepping in to buy it up. And at the same time, cheap Chinese goods are flooding into Iran. So China is filling the gaps left behind by countries that are retreating. China is now Iran's biggest trading partner and has traditionally relied on Iran's oil to fuel economic growth, both inside China and as part of the Belt and Road Initiative. In 2017, China imported a third of all Iranian oil, more than any other country. So, when a French energy giant called Total succumbed to U.S. pressure and pulled out of a $5 billion agreement to develop a massive offshore natural gas field in Iran, guess what? China stepped in. The same thing could happen with an important seaport in Iran that India has planned to invest half a billion dollars into. The port is located in the strategic Gulf of Oman and would give India access to Afghanistan, Russia, and Europe. However, Iran has indicated its willingness to involve China in the project should negotiations with India stall, which would give the Chinese regime a nice port on the other side of India, just a hundred miles away from the one they have in Pakistan. And China stands to make out big on Iranian oil. With other buyers cutting back, Iran has been forced to store 13 million barrels in offshore supertankers. The Chinese Communist Party knows that with Iran in a political bind, it's a great opportunity to buy up cheap oil, especially since other Chinese oil suppliers are struggling. And China's not just getting the oil for cheap, they're also getting it without all the risk. Two of China's largest state-backed oil companies have activated a clause to get around U.S. sanctions. So whereas in June, nearly half of the vessels shipping oil from Iran to China were operated by Chinese companies, in July, all of the tankers were operated by the National Iranian Tanker Company. That means 
Iran will cover all the costs and risks of delivering the crude as well as handling the insurance. And yes, it was a mutual decision. Of course, the United States is aware that China is the kink in its plan to sanction Iranian oil. Which is why the U.S. says China, like other countries, faces the same threat of sanctions for continuing to import Iranian oil. Of course, China could always do what it did when it was buying Iranian oil during the sanctions before the Iran nuclear deal. You see, most banks don't want to finance Iranian trade because if the U.S. cuts off access to the dollar, they're sunk. But the giant China National Petroleum Corp. has its own bank, called the Bank of Kunlun. It can use that to handle oil transactions because it has very limited exposure to the global financial system, so is well placed to continue dealing with Iran. The central bank of Iran has accounts at Kunlun into which Chinese buyers have paid the equivalent of billions of dollars for oil. See, at the end of the day, China needs oil, and Iran needs to sell it. So as the United States squeezes, Iran is becoming more dependent on the Chinese Communist Party. But given what's happened with a lot of countries that do business with the Communist Party, like Sri Lanka, Cambodia, and Djibouti, it might not be all peaches and cream for Iran in the long run. And before you go, it's time to answer a question from a fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Alfred Schneider asks, Chris, I hear the CCP has done a great job cracking down on subversive activities such as praying, meditating, and reading the Bible. What's the latest news on how the good fight is going against these dangerous extremists? Good question, Alfred. Yes, the CCP is doing a great job cracking down on people who believe in things. Earlier this year, authorities blew up a Christian megachurch with dynamite. There's a new law in the works that prohibits online preaching. And just last week, one of the largest underground churches in Beijing got shut down because the pastors refused to install surveillance cameras that would have allowed Chinese authorities to benevolently monitor every churchgoer. And authorities across China have been forcing churches to remove images of that subversive anti-Roman splittist, you know, Jesus, and replace them with wholesome images of communist leader Xi Jinping. But despite all this persecution, or perhaps partly because of it, Christianity is on the rise in China, both in official and underground churches. Thanks for your question, Alfred, and thank you for watching China Uncensored. Be sure to subscribe for more. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time. Want me to answer your question? Become a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Support the show on the crowdfunding website Patreon by contributing a dollar or more per episode. You'll be helping get uncensored information about China out there, and you'll get some cool perks.